NASA is now urging the scientific community to shift its attention toward Venus, following a groundbreaking discovery suggesting the possible existence of life on the planet. Looking back at NASA's documentation from the 1960s, it's clear the agency once described Venus in highly negative terms, even referring to it as a kind of planetary inferno. In stark contrast, Mars gradually emerged as the focus of space missions. This seemingly selective characterization of inner planets wasn't accidental. During the intense era of the space race, the Soviet Union heavily invested in sending numerous costly spacecraft to Venus, despite the planet's harsh and unwelcoming conditions that showed minimal potential for hosting life. Yet, the Soviet commitment to the Venera program remained steadfast until the collapse of the USSR. Thanks in large part to insights from astrophysicists like Neil deGrasse Tyson, we now have a better grasp of the motivations behind these missions. In this discussion, we'll explore the newly accessible, previously classified images of Venus captured by the Soviet Union. The dissolution of the USSR didn't just shift global geopolitics. It also buried numerous secrets. The Soviets had a notorious reputation for secrecy, from maintaining one of the most elite intelligence agencies in the world to cloaking any potential alien encounters in mystery. As a former superpower, the USSR harbored countless hidden truths. Before the United States assumed leadership in planetary exploration, it was actually the Soviets who dominated early space activities. The USSR's ambitious efforts were largely centered on Venus, a planet considered hellish and virtually uninhabitable. In Russian, Venus is known as Venera, which became the name of their mission series that spanned more than two decades, from 1961 to 1983. During this same period, the United States was busy executing lunar missions, so the Soviets strategically diverted their focus to a different celestial body. Their fascination with Venus wasn't entirely irrational. Perhaps they envisioned using the planet's surface as a strategic military outpost, or maybe they genuinely sought to colonize it after searching for any trace of alien life. Given that these expeditions occurred at the height of the Cold War, the USSR was naturally secretive about the goals and objectives of their Venus missions. The only information we now possess about these operations comes from declassified files and recovered records, and even those leave many questions unanswered. What exactly were the Soviets searching for, and did they uncover any game-changing discoveries on Venus? Their exploration wasn't limited to just a few attempts. Far from it, the USSR launched a total of 28 missions toward Venus. Out of these, 13 probes managed to enter the planet's dense atmosphere, and 8 achieved successful landings. Such an enormous series of attempts gave the USSR a dominant edge in extraterrestrial research at the time. While NASA also made considerable progress, its primary interest lay in orbiting technology and satellite development rather than planetary surface exploration. Mars only gained serious attention from NASA in later years. What's lesser known is that the Soviet space program was the first to send a probe into the atmosphere of another world. It also holds several other firsts in space history. The USSR was the first to complete a soft landing on another planet and the first to return images and even audio recordings from its surface. These achievements echoed the same monumental spirit as the US's famous moon landing. Yet, despite such impressive milestones, these Soviet missions are barely acknowledged in mainstream accounts of space exploration. This neglect largely stems from the USSR's penchant for secrecy. When the Soviet Union formally dissolved in 1992, the space agency was dismantled and later reassembled under the new Russian banner as Roscosmos. Many critical records and technical data from the Venera program were either destroyed or lost during this transition, which is one reason we have only a vague understanding of the USSR's precise motivations for exploring Venus so aggressively. However, a logical assumption is that the Soviets opted for Venus due to cost efficiency. It's not that the USSR lacked aspirations about the planet's habitability. Rather, they were pragmatically investigating elements like water presence, solar radiation levels, and geological features. Without the comprehensive data obtained from these missions, we'd have no way of measuring the planet's extreme temperatures and incredibly dense atmosphere. Today, many astronomers are convinced that Venus is far too hostile to sustain life. Its surface is hot enough to liquefy lead, water is almost non-existent, and the pressure is dozens of times greater than Earth's. These understandings are relatively recent, however. 
disregarding the USSR's massive contribution to Venus research would essentially rewrite history. From the Soviet perspective, Venus was always worth the effort, even if the main goal was just to prove dominance in the ongoing space rivalry. While Mars, a more promising candidate for habitability, was never ruled out by the Soviets, reaching it required significantly more investment. The simple fact is that Venus is much closer to Earth than Mars. The average distance to Venus is around 40 million kilometers, compared to Mars' 250 million. This vast difference in proximity translated into significantly lower mission costs, a crucial consideration for a country that lacked the economic firepower of the United States. Soviet missions were frequently plagued by malfunctions and performance issues. It's well documented that many of their spacecraft suffered from design flaws and communication breakdowns. That's precisely why they focused on Venus, a closer target with a higher probability of achieving tangible results. Omitting the context of the space race also leaves a large gap in the Venera mission story. Remember, it was the USSR that launched Sputnik 1 in 1957, the first ever artificial satellite, kickstarting a fierce competition between the two superpowers. While NASA concentrated on the moon, the Soviets zeroed in on Venus. Interestingly, NASA's early attempts to explore Venus repeatedly failed. The American agency found itself stuck in what became known as the Venus Curse. Multiple probes were lost or malfunctioned as soon as they entered Venus' volatile atmosphere. Seizing the opportunity, the USSR doubled down on its efforts to dominate Venus exploration, especially since both countries were hellbent on winning the space race. It became a strategic division of labor. The U.S. took the moon and the Soviets took Venus. The USSR's relentless pursuit of Venus missions was a direct attempt to overshadow the U.S. in space science. Despite its limited resources and bureaucratic challenges, the Soviet Union managed to send more missions to Venus than any other country. NASA's PR response was to downplay the significance of Venus, labeling it as a scorching wasteland while promoting Mars as humanity's future destination. This narrative was pushed through popular media, where Venus was demonized and Mars was celebrated. But for the Soviets, it wasn't about public opinion, it was about proving superiority. The Venera program, although largely forgotten today, was an incredibly sophisticated and ambitious undertaking. If there's any single project that could be considered the true beginning of the modern space era, it would be these missions. Back in the 1950s, Soviet engineers and scientists began constructing and experimenting with early probe designs. Over the next 30 years, they refined their models and deployed a wide array of spacecraft to Venus, often working under intense geopolitical stress. Despite these constraints, the USSR had early advantages, including greater payload capacity. This capability enabled the Soviets to build and launch heavier spacecraft capable of enduring harsh interplanetary travel. The Soviet scientific community was simultaneously refining mathematical models to calculate exact flight paths and gravitational influences necessary for successful landings. Their parallel Mars missions were also making headway, but Venus was always the primary objective. Among their most notable achievements was the 1966 launch of Venera 3, the first human-made object to reach Venus and make contact with its surface. While U.S. missions often met with disaster, the USSR's program was gradually improving. Despite occasional setbacks, the Soviets continually sent probes that managed to enter Venus' thick atmosphere and sometimes land. One recurring challenge was the limited size and design capability of their spacecraft. But these issues were eventually overcome, particularly in the 1970s when the USSR began deploying its most advanced Venera models. They even achieved the first dual launches with Venera 4 and Venera 5. This decade, many historians argue, was the golden era of planetary science. Although NASA tried to replicate these complex launch configurations, the USSR had already mastered the technique. The purpose behind dual spacecraft deployments was data precision. By launching two similar yet individually optimized probes, the Soviets aimed to gather multi-layered atmospheric and surface data. Venera 4 surveyed the planet and entered its atmosphere successfully. Venera 5 followed with specific enhancements to collect more detailed readings. These probes were designed to withstand and measure Venus' extreme heat, pressure, and radiation. By the mid-1970s, the program entered an even more advanced phase. 
Every aspect of the Venera design, from insulation materials to communication systems, was being perfected. With every successful mission, the USSR came closer to understanding Venus in unparalleled detail. Perhaps the most iconic launch was that of Venera 7, which became the first probe to transmit data from the surface of another planet. The Soviets had already confirmed the planet's extreme environmental conditions, and now they were recording its audio. In the 1980s, the Venera program reached its technical zenith with Venera 13, which produced the first-ever colored panoramic photographs of Venus. This twin probe, Venera 14, was also dispatched to collect similar datasets. Because the Soviet Union was among the first nations to seriously explore Venus, Roscosmos, Russia's modern space agency, has recently renewed interest in Venus-related missions. A collaborative venture with NASA named Venera D is already in the planning stages. Scheduled for a tentative launch in the late 2020s or early 2030s, this mission will deploy a new generation of instruments aimed at analyzing the atmosphere and geological features of Venus, with an eye toward detecting signs of potential past or present life. The mission will include an orbiter, a lander, and potentially even an inflatable aerial probe to study the planet's thick cloud layers in greater detail. The legacy of the Venera missions goes far beyond just scientific findings or geopolitical symbolism. Initiated in the heat of the Cold War, these missions exemplify human ingenuity and the relentless pursuit of knowledge. Despite overwhelming technical, financial, and political hurdles, Soviet scientists pressed on. Their innovative use of robotic instruments for climate and terrain analysis laid the foundation for planetary science as we know it. These pioneering efforts yielded crucial insights into Venus' extreme climate, including crushing pressure, searing temperatures, and an atmosphere rich in carbon dioxide and sulfuric acid. Technological strides made during this era also influenced broader space exploration efforts. Breakthroughs in heat shield technology, communication systems, and landing mechanisms would go on to benefit later missions to places like Mars and beyond. Even today, the design philosophies born from the Venera program inform current aerospace engineering strategies. Socially and politically, these missions were significant as well. In the context of the space race, each Venera launch was not just a scientific event but a demonstration of technological prowess and ideological competition. When Venera 7 landed in 1970 and transmitted data from Venus' surface, it was a monumental achievement that showcased the USSR's capability to overcome extreme environmental obstacles. Alongside scientific tools, the probes were equipped with imaging equipment that captured the first close-up visuals of Venus' surface. These photographs revealed rugged landscapes with volcanic and rocky features, helping scientists trace the geological evolution of the planet. Later missions such as Venera 13 and 14 continued this work, enriching our understanding of Venus' terrain and mineral composition. Of course, the Venera program wasn't without setbacks. Several missions failed to reach Venus or suffered from system failures that prevented data transmission. The hostile conditions, including temperatures exceeding 450 degrees Celsius, 842 degrees Fahrenheit, and clouds of sulfuric acid, posed immense challenges to spacecraft durability and functionality. Still, the perseverance of Soviet scientists allowed them to push through these barriers. Their legacy continues today, as space agencies including NASA prepare for upcoming Venus explorations. One such initiative is the proposed Vityaz mission, intended as a joint project between Roscosmos and NASA. Building upon the technological and scientific achievements of the Venera missions, Vityaz aims to investigate Venus more thoroughly than ever before, exploring its atmospheric chemistry, geological activity, and potential for harboring life. As we look forward to this next chapter in Venus exploration, it's important to remember that these efforts stand on the shoulders of Soviet scientists and engineers who dared to reach out to a planet long dismissed as too hostile to matter. Their work laid the groundwork for all subsequent Venus missions and reshaped our understanding of the possibilities that exist beyond Earth.